Hello, I'm Carolyn Holzman, and this is Confessions of an SEO. You've come across the least SEO SEO podcast on the planet. I don't do interviews because, well, there are some great ones out there, and, and I try not to teach SEO directly through here, but I'm sure some naturally sneaks through. But this is primarily about the human side of SEO. Welcome to Confessions of an SEO 2024 Mountain Edition. I'm in the glorious mountains of Western North Carolina on this sixth episode of the summer of 2024. Next week, I'll be broadcasting from Vermont's Green Mountains. For longtime listeners, we're in year four. So I'm talking about those that were with me probably in year two. You know firsthand how challenging it was for me to come up with weekly topics in the summer. I thought last week, you know, that I might have jinxed myself when I said, you know, the topics are coming in so much easier and right on time. Not to uh, uh, put too fine a point on it. It's an example of what I was talking about in the previous episode um, called Eye for an Eye SEO. You know, if we get one thing, it costs us another. So I'm calling BS on that. But I can tell you, that after a terrific weekend of mountain life, I'm talking music, food, my favorite game where I, when I'm driving, I get lost and I'm just exploring whatever area I'm in. That's, it was just giddy fun this weekend. But I would be lying if I didn't admit that there were a couple of thoughts about, hey, what are you doing gallivanting all over the mountains? You don't even know what your topic for the podcast is going to be next week. Like, wah, wah, wah. you know, in the face of that thought, I thought, no, I won't stress. I'm allowed to take a weekend off so I don't work much, right? I'm always working. But anyway, I just chose to really know that the topic was there and all I needed to do was stay open and pay attention. Well, that happened this morning. Okay, so this week's topic I'm calling Schadenfreunde SEO. Yes, that is German, and yes, I will connect the dots. My passion is, as you know, forensic SEO. SEO is always problem solving, but in my case, I get to work on sites because there's a really bad problem. It's like, you know, the digital version of a nodding like 50 necklaces <laughs> that, that are all tied up together. This is my confession this week. I might be a terrible person because I get a secret thrill when clients who come to me who are devastated by their SEO woes, I now have this glorious problem that I would love to solve. You know, so it's like I'm an, in some ways an SEO vulture eagerly circling their digital misfortune. But, you know, here's the difference. I, at least I potentially can provide them information and could fix the problem, right? So I kind of call this twisted joy forensic SEO, aka Schadenfreunde SEO, where I play detective on digital disasters and secretly reveal in every little clue. So what is forensic SEO? I know I talk about this frequently, but it's helpful for me. I hope it is for you too, but it's really starting at some of the very basics. You know, an example would be like, you know, can I prove Google is crawling your site to uncover factors leading to a lack of performance? You know, and at some point when you've ruled out all the technical things, we don't just fix a site. Like there's no some, you know, that the technical thing is that one global thing, right? Like, hey, fix this. Once all that's ruled out, you have to look at it um, and we have to approach it from a particular page performance. You know, for instance, it could be the money page. It doesn't produce money anymore or form bills on this page that have dried up. And the idea is that by focusing in every detail on that one page, it might yield proof of concept so that other pages suffering similar issues at varying degrees can be recovered or in the best of all possible world, kind of help those pages that are just at the very beginning of, of that, whatever it is, is catching it. So it can kind of, we can head it off at the pass, right? That page doesn't have to go through the same experience as the one that's, you know, everybody's crying about. And it's a very methodical approach, similar to, I love to save 
criminal forensics, you know, to uncover hidden problems affecting search performance. It's straightforward, but it is tedious. What is Schadenfreunde? All right. So we know that it's German and it means pleasure derived from another's misfortune. It's kind of going to make me laugh a little bit. And it's a universal human experience. It's not all that great or you're not rewarded positively when you share, you know, or you admit that this is sometimes how you feel. And in fact, this ties in to an earlier episode, um, the three stages of truth, aka the Schopenhauer episode. You know, the party dude. Well, he really wasn't, but I like saying that. And by all accounts, he was a real party pooper. But he also had some thoughts on Schadenfreunde. And he has a famous quote on it. To feel envy is human. To savor Schadenfreunde is devilish. <laughs> okay. So, and and I couldn't help but like think, you know, the parallels between um, the stages of truth concept and the typical client journey in forensic SEO. You know, one, denial of problems. Two, Violent opposition to suggested changes. And three, finally, acceptance of the necessary actions to get the money flowing again. And I'm sure any SEOs listening likely have lots of stories like the examples I'm about to share. Now, for instance, and this is no small example. This was the first site where I suspected its problems lie in the jump links and that the jump links were causing the demise of the site. If this is the first time you've heard me talk about jump links and site destruction, <laughs> you haven't been paying attention. You can check that out. I think that one is at carolyn.digital, and you'll see my write-up on where I talk about the canonical being broken. But going back to this, this site, you know, this is like ground zero. And it had been a head scratcher for quite some time. Search Console, you know, with all its foibles, it can really be helpful to isolate things and and to really kind of, you have to understand that this, this site owner lost their shirt. Um, and I feel that. You know how we talk about oftentimes medical doctors are very dispassionate, you know, when they're talking about whatever diagnosis people have and, you know, things that are like your life. Well, that's not me. I could not make myself feel unaffected by their woes. And I'm, I'm telling you, once I, um, once I started to make the connections, you know, between the data, the performance and the decline, honestly, I was giddy. I knew I couldn't successfully likely explain this to anybody who wasn't an SEO, but even ultimately that turned out to be inaccurate because I've gotten better at talking about this in, in different terms. But it was, oh my God, so exciting. Um, I felt like I was on top of the world. And at the same time, this poor person was suffering, you know, but, you know, also the joy came from finding a pathway forward that they could fix it. It was like, yes, like, this system works. You know, if you're paying attention, you can find things. Unfortunately, um, this particular sign owner is kind of, last we spoke, still stuck in stage one of denial. The other story is a more recent one. And I received an email from someone who was clearly in the belief that their site had been hit by the helpful content system. They had removed all of their jump links, but there was no recovery. And the, the tenor of the email was like, thanks, but no thanks, you know, kind of resigned to their fate. So I reached out and offered to take a look. Now, in our industry, that's short for normally I charge for this, but I won't in your case. And I figured, hey, uh, I could learn something from this. And at the same time, you know, within limits, right? I promised myself I, I would not spend more than an hour. It didn't take that long. And, and by the way, I'm, I'm having to deal with how to not let the excitement of figuring this one out cause my brain to like flub up in my mouth. But, but get this. This was a site and it was a sort of a news informational site, like a monetized local directory based on various locations. You know, so I just started looking at the search console data. No access to the site. So first... The wobble that eventually dropped off the cliff wasn't aligned with the timeline um, 
of any type of helpful content um, rollout. So either the standalone or last March in the uh, core update now that's all baked in. So, so that wobble and drop didn't happen during the normal wobble and drop of a helpful content uh, hit. Second of all, um, the site, according to Search Console data, Google hadn't seen all those jump links that had been removed. I mean, I did the long go back 16 months kind of thing. Believe based on the message that what they had to do was a manual removal. It wasn't as easy as turning off a plugin. So I'm thinking, okay, I know how Google crawls, even if there's no content being published on a site. Let me see when the last time the site map was submitted. And well, that that gave me the answer. It wasn't a helpful content hit, but a technical issue caused by the sitemap. And you might think <laughs> that a person who got a free analysis and diagnostic diagnostic from, and I think I can say this without being immodest, you know, probably I am a very qualified forensic SEO on specifically the helpful content update. And you would have thought after all that, you know, that person would have been thrilled that it was something so easy to fix. Because like, how cool is that? So here I am so excited. And they're like, nah, that's not it. I did push them a little bit to create a different sitemap uh, using a different plugin than the one they were using, which they repeatedly said they had no problem with all their other sites, but only this one. And I'm like, well, this this would be a logical next step. Just change your plugin and create a fresh sitemap and turn that other one off. You know, if it was a dead sitemap for ever reason, providing a fresh one, completely different. And I, I felt like that was the thing. We would know confirmation if Google accepted this new site and started to crawl the site again, which it did, you know. And so it was like, I am like way high up on the ceiling, so excited and reaching out. And they're like, um, no, it's still showing a problem on my end. And I was like, no. It's it's okay. It's, it's it's made its way through. And I think sometimes, you know, it boils down to some people forget to refresh when you're in Search Console to refresh refresh that page that you're looking at in Search Console. Because sometimes it will hold on to old information until you actually refresh it. Bottom line, they were having none of it and promptly removed me from Search Console without even a buy your leave. Now I am I am fine. I look at that as that's my own education, which I am grateful that I have the ability to provide those 30 minutes and help us both out. Look, it's a story here, right? That that I'll take. And I shared these to illustrate the contrast, you know, between customer despair and my forensic excitement. And then I wonder why is why is that pretty common? You know, I I used to think in the early days, like, ah, Carolyn, you're doing it wrong because they should be a lot happier than they are. But it's very, very common. And when I speak to other colleagues, they experience the same thing. And I get why some of these site owners may feel devastated. You know, maybe maybe they just needed a venting opportunity, you know, vent to somebody else and get it out of their system. There's also, I think, a couple other things in there. One, I, I do think sometimes... People want to be right more than they want to be rich. And there may be some small part of themselves that they want this to be hopeless. Like they they do not really want me to find something. And I can imagine, you know, if that's the case, it would be rather galling to hear, fix your site map. Now, in the years I've been doing this forensically, it is amazing how often it is the basic fix. Rarely ever. Has it been the the super sexy negative SEO attack, which is what makes this so exciting to me? You know, every time it reinforces the basics, the basics, and this informs my own SEO work. And thankfully, you know, it's within our ability as SEO people to recover from, you know, to make changes and to to get things back to where we can at least compete. And then, you know, when you get that super sexy Google is broken analysis, find me in a state of joy that it can be figured out, that, that there is a path that is just, it, it doesn't have to be this way, right? We don't have to be resigned to be victims in, within Google. 
then I was thinking like, what brings me, you know, to this discussion is a perceived potential, I guess, ethical dilemma, right? Is it wrong to enjoy solving these problems so much? You know, and how do I balance this empathy with what is nothing short of professional satisfaction? You know, and it, when it comes to the value to these clients, because that that's huge. I'm being paid to tell them what's going on. This is to their benefit, despite their initial emotional disconnect. Now, I am working to to channel, you know, some of this energy in a positive way, you know, communicating to them, not just, you know, what's going on, but pointing out more often the power that this information provides to them so that they can move forward. They can make some choices. You know, very often there's multiple ways to skin a cat. They're still a business, right? They can they can see a path forward. This one will require this type of resource. This one will require those other different resources. But it puts them in a the captain's chair. You know, and it's the, the classic. Uh, you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make them drink. When it comes to this schadenfreunde SEO, I think I... I think I have to interpret my experience much like the saying, you know, if you're asking yourself if you're crazy, then you're probably not. So in this case, I guess if I'm asking if I'm a terrible person, I'm probably not. But if you have your own terrible person SEO moments, feel free to share them. I'd like to know if I'm the only one. You can email confessions at AmericanWayMedia.com or text 512-222-3132. I'd love to hear from you. Well, that's it for me this week. To stay on the cutting edge of the state of indexing, check out Crawl or No Crawl on Substack. There'll be a link in the description. And I have a new service to get the best pair of eyes to confirm if you've got a helpful content issue. Uh, It starts at $349. There I go. All you have to do is add helpful content system at Gmail to your verified search console site, send the payment, and I'll review the data. All right. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for being a listener. If you have questions or topic ideas, like I said, I want to hear from you. And you can text to that same number, 512-222-3132. Well, thanks again. And until next week, I'll see you in the SERPs.